Vidam vas ponovni. Kombinator is here again with another thing from the retro past. This one being a Radlib card. It is a Adlib card compatible from the good folks at Texelec. I actually am doing the Hyperion keyboard and I looked at their website and they had one of these replica Radlib cards and it was about uh, $3 more expensive than getting a kit form that I have to put together myself, which I don't have a problem with doing, but it's just easier. Uh, so this card is going into my 386 computer from 1989. This is going to be era correct. Right now it has a card in there, Crystal 4248, if I made that wrong, I'll edit it in, right here. Uh, that is a 16-bit sound card from 1994. It's a bit too old for the computer, so yeah, I've always wanted one of these things, the originals. Actually, uh, when I was about half my age right now, that uh, I was working in a computer store, we just chucked these things out. Now, these and Sound Blaster 1.08 bits, garbage, garbage, garbage. We sold them for five bucks. I think I bought a stack of them and stuck them in any 386 and 46 computer at the time, just to say they had a Sound Blaster. Combinazzi, right? In any case, uh, right, so now I paid 98 US dollars for this thing. This is not a promo for the company. I don't actually know if this works. We'll find all of that out. It's still sealed. Uh, but uh, I'm just super, super excited to, to have this piece with me. And uh, we're going to go over what it is and how it should work in a computer that comes from the mid to late 80s. All right, see you soon. All right, so welcome back to my wife's least favorite place of filming. This would be the kitchen. I've upgraded the lights to spotlight LEDs so we can better see the insides of the computer, presumably better eat the food. Uh, right, so moving along to the machine itself, it is a 386 SX16 with four megs of RAM via DIPS. This motherboard does take SIPs, which I do have. Uh, they're in a 286 right now though, so the focus of today obviously being the Radlib card, which is going to be inserted here. Yep, this is the sound card. This is a 16-bit sound card. It is a Crystal 4248. It's a bit too new for the system, being from around 1994. I think the drivers are from like 1996. So it did the job, but I've always wanted to put an Adlib compatible card, era correct card. So this one's coming out, and we're going to replace it with this. But before we do that, we're going to run some baselines. So how that's going to be done is back here, I have a splitter coming out, and one channel, one channel, one fork is going to be going to these speakers. And the other one is going to be going to this recorder. And that's what I'm going to sync up with the sound in the video later on. So let's get started with this. Uh, I have a few games on here that run AdLib only. Then there are some games that run AdLib and Sound Blaster compatibility mode. So we'll, uh, we'll explore those. So let's do that. All right, we'll start with the cold boot. The more RAM you had, the better the weight was. You had to be patient if you had a lot of RAM. Four megs in this case. There's the sound initializer for the Sound Blaster compatible. This one does have a Yamaha OPL 2 or 3 chip on it. I'm not sure exactly. We'll figure that out when we pull it out. Anyways, on to some games. Before we begin the comparison, as a kid, I did not actually have a sound card in any of my computers until much later, and I just used the PC speaker. So bear that in mind when I start to compare these cards. The reason that I'm going to leave the waveforms up for you guys to judge is for you guys to judge because I might not be the best specialist 
in terms of sound differentiation between the cards. What I will do is introduce the cards themselves. The first card that was in the 386 that I pulled out was a CS4248-KL, which uses the Opti929 drivers. And this card worked well in the computer. The reason that I replaced it was I wanted something more era correct. That's more important for me than sound, I guess, quality. This one does have voice synthesis and PCM. The other one does not, which is what I replaced it with. And it's fine. It used to drive a two-speed CD-ROM, and I still have it. I'll probably be putting it into another build. So it's an OPL3 chip. The chip on the actual board is an OPL YMF262-M, so it's a, it's a genuine chip. So the card that it was replaced with was the Radlib. Uh, it's an Adlib clone. Uh, this one is a mono output replica of the original Adlib sound card. It does not support pulse code modulation. So the test was done first using the Crystal sound card on several games, and then it was redone again on the AdLib card, and both times it was piped into the Olympus Digital Voice Recorder VN702PC. I have to mention that, in, especially in the Utopia soundtrack, there you will notice there's some. It sounds like it's overdriven, or there's like some weird clipping that does not actually come through the monitor speakers, and it's present in both cards. So, having said that, let's go case by case and see how they compare. Every test will have the OPL3 Sound Blaster compatible on top, and the Radlib OPL2 on the bottom. In this case, the game is Street Rod 2 from 1991. Everything is done through OPL2 in the AdLib mode. So let's have a listen to the differences. I'm just switching back and forth between the two, so let's go. So these are both mono outputs, and it looks to me like the AdLib, the OPL2, was handling that a little bit better, although not identical sound waveforms. Eh, I don't know why that is. However, immediately apparent is the amount of noise that the OPL3 generates. I'm not entirely sure if that's because of the card's 25-year-old age, or you know the fact that maybe better components were used, or just newer components were used for the OPL2, but this is a recurring theme that you will see throughout all the other tests. Okay, so the next game is going to be 1990s Stunts. While a driver option for Sound Blaster and AdLib exist discreetly in the system, the sound output is the same. So we're going to run first the OPL2 on the bottom here, and then we're going to compare that to the sound generated by the OPL3. So there you have it. Uh, again, a lot of noise on the OPL2. There was a bit of clipping that I heard through the speakers at least, uh, or sorry, through the headphones at least, around this area here, but that does not come through on the speakers itself. I think that it's just a matter of turning the pot down on the AdLib. So the third game in the series of tests is going to be Gremlin Interactive's 1991 release, Utopia. Now, be warned, there's a lot of apparent clipping here, and this actually did come through the monitor speakers on the 386 in both cases. I'm not sure why that is, 
both cards seem to have the same problem. Let's have a listen. The last game for comparison will be Wolfenstein, released in 1992. The splash screen did indicate the difference between an ad-lib and a sound blaster when respectively each one was installed. So the ad-lib card and the sound blaster card are synced to about this point, at which point I played a different level and you know the, the, these are the sounds that are coming out of it. What you'll notice though is the sounds coming out of the ad-lib card do not contain the door opening, gun firing, dog barking sounds. That's because it's FM synthesis only. Having said that, let's listen to the FM synthesis portion. <laughs> Impressions then. The card is well built and seems to parody the original card quite well, in both form and function. Uh, the only complaint I would have are the holes in the back of the idle panel, which are kind of drilled, you know, they're, they're kind of old. I mean, nobody really looks back there, so it's fine. Uh, the card itself does perform better than the OPL3 that I had in there. Uh, the gain was, in the test, a bit loud, but I mean, that's adjustable. There's a pot back there. So, is it worth buying? Overall, I would say yes. Uh, that's despite me already having an OPL3 card in there. Uh, this is primarily fueled by my desire to be as irrecorrect to this hardware as possible. Uh, the Radloop card does not require any drivers, nor does it have any problems working with the original software design for it, at least in the test that I have, I had no problems. Um, it will power non-amplified speakers, such as these ones, very well. Um, so, even at full crank, it didn't distort, there were no clipping, no popping, they sound great coming out of these speakers. So, even though the card may say Radlib on it and have the date of 2018, uh, it's an excellent reproduction unit and does a very good job of reproducing sound out of a card that's quarter century old at this point. So if you do not have a Sound Blaster 13XX series, um, which I used to buy for five bucks, oh, they're worth so much money right now. Anyways, I threw a whole bunch of them out as well too. But if you want to correct, you know, 1987, 1990 uh, niche reproduction unit. This will work very well for your needs. So, now it's time for me to remove this computer from the kitchen, maybe eat some dinner on it, and, you know, move on to the next project. So, do następnego, wysoły świąt, życzę wam kombinator.